Hello, I'm Dawn Durham, and welcome to Patent Pod. I want to assure all of you who are listening, Patent Pod and the entire patent system remains dedicated to providing professional development for educators and support for families and students during these unprecedented times. Today, we're excited to talk with two school districts who are going to share their efforts for the middle school success path to graduation grant they've been engaged with during this academic school year. From the Butler Area School District, we have Beth Sampson and Dave Andrews. From the Governor Mifflin School District, we have Sue Buffy and Jessica Plank. Thank you all so much for being here with us today. Welcome to Pat and Pod. I want to start off with in Butler Area School District. We'll kind of start with you if, you if we could. I want to talk about an early warning system. We know that identifying those students who are on a path that may not lead to graduation is something we have to think about early on. And when we think about implementing an early warning system, and I know you have or are engaged in that process, what kind of um, challenges or experiences have you come across as a result of that? So this is our second year in the grant. Um, so we were charged with coming up with that early warning system process um, at the beginning of last school year. And in our situation, we're a bit unique. We're focusing mainly on our seventh and eighth graders. Um, so when we sat down to take a look at those indicators, we were looking at attendance, behavior, and grades, particularly in ELA and math. Um, one of the particular challenges that we had at the beginning was we were rolling into a new student information system. So we were, our entire district was rolling from one platform to another. So learning that platform at the same time as we were trying to collect really solid data for these students um, was a challenge. And what we ended up doing was actually um, creating our own type of place to compile the information, we relied heavily on Google Suites to do that so that we could make sure that as we were learning our new student information system, we had all of our information in one place as well. And it was solid data to look at from month to month. Um, one of our other challenges that we've had to work through with the grant is we have a very transient student population. So keeping things within our own platform, within that own Google Sheet, also helped when we had students who left and came back and maybe that data wasn't captured within our student information system as nicely as we would have liked it to be. And Governor Mifflin School District, what can you share about implementing an early warning system and, and maybe some struggles that you've had? So, um, we are very new to this whole process um, and we're, we're very thankful that we are a part of it. Um, we shared some of the similar struggles that Beth talked about uh, moving to a new platform this year. So the way that we reported discipline was totally different than how we had done it before. Um, so we had to kind of work through that. Uh, grading was a bit of an issue um, because in our English language arts program, we do not give letter grades. So we give um, numbers one through four. So we had to come up with some type of system for um, flagging those students who weren't doing well in ELA. So those I think were our two biggest um, challenges is moving into that new platform and reporting discipline and um, the grading. Well, you know, Beth, and so I appreciate the, the honesty about the struggles that you've had, because I do think these are challenges that when any school is looking to implement or has implemented an early warning system, they are looking at learning new platforms and transitioning data and collecting data and potentially a new platform that's unfamiliar. The grading conversations come up, the transient populations of what are we tracking, what aren't we tracking, what can we track? So I think those are all very, um, you know, real struggles, and I appreciate your honesty about that. What advice might we offer to folks, to districts, to schools who want to go ahead and implement an early warning system? Well, I would say um, <clears throat> I think we need to find a way to make our data that we're collecting, um, how we're implementing our data more uniform mm -hmm. and more easily accessible to everybody involved in the process so that um, we have a clear path using that data to inform us as we move forward. Um, I think we need to, um, we haven't started our actual interventions yet. So, um, and I know we're gonna get into that later, but I, I 
think some advice would be to find a way to um, keep track of those interventions uh, in a timely fashion to be able to see the data on a regular basis um, so that we know what's working and what we need to tweak a bit. And I would say, um, as I kind of spoke to earlier, kind of taking that information from whatever your student information system is and compiling it in a different place seemed to be very helpful for us. Mm -hmm. um, we meet as a team once a month. And so we pull down that data once a month and take a look at it. And then within that same chart, we're able to list, okay, at this point where we saw this many um, absences, maybe the student moved you know, from like a green to yellow type of um, area of concern we're able to list then right beside it what intervention we implemented at that point. So it's been nice to have the information for just these grant students that we're tracking the data um, on, on one sheet that we can all kind of refer to as we discuss it as a team. I think those are good advice tips, you know, just in the place of having all the data in one location. So as you had said, making it accessible to everyone so that everyone can view that data. I think I hear that a lot when I go to school. So I think that's a good piece of advice is, you know, keeping the data in, in a location that we can access easily and then everyone can access to be able to track students, track the information coming in and then looking at what interventions may or may not be needed. So I appreciate that insight. Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to talk about that data doesn't data driven decision making. We kind of alluded to that a little bit, but we know that when we make data the conversation, we can be very prescriptive and targeted in our instruction. Because of these data driven decision making processes we go through, what interventions have you or plan to implement in the future moving forward? So if I can just go ahead and start with Butler Area School District, you know, can you guide us on that path that you've been thinking about? Yeah, we've, um, as a team, and I think one of the greatest things about this grant is it's been a truly team approach to it. And with these monthly meetings and, and having everybody on the same page, and, and like Beth said about collecting this data and being able to go through it as, as a group and really target these students with, with interventions. Uh, and then we break down with other groups with the mentors and, and seeing what the mentors are actually doing with each of the students. Um, we've been able to, to implement Check and Connect with our mentors and been able to go through with these students and, and meet them at individual uh, levels with, with mentors that are appropriate to them. Um, and it's, it's really, I guess, one of the greatest things about the grant is while we're targeting individual students, I, I think we see changes happening at, at a building level and we also are going to see changes happening at a district level. And I, I think it, this has been a fantastic program to really get some of these changes going in our district in Butler. Um, and I get to travel to, to multiple buildings in our district and, and really some of these changes are going to be able to be implemented across our, all of our buildings. And Jessica, can you share a little bit from Governor Mifflin's perspective? Yeah, I actually agree a lot with what Dave was saying. So since we are in the beginning of the process, um, the first intervention we're putting into place is training our teachers in Check and Connect. Um, and we had that set up. So, um, you know, I'm the actual emotional support teacher and I teach seventh through eighth grade. So we're doing the same as Butler where we're focusing just on those seventh and eighth graders. And when you're in that emotional support world, it's almost like, you kind of are on your own island sometimes. So um, all the interventions we're putting in place seem to just be in that emotional support classroom. And with this grant, we're able to spread that out. So if my students are struggling in a classroom and I'm dealing with another student or I'm teaching a class, they can go to their mentor and their mentor can support them. It just opens that of, um, it just opens it up so that the kids don't feel like Miss Plank is the only one who can help them. You know, Miss Boothie can help them. Ms. You know, just all these teachers can help them. And I know just being in the emotional support world, kids seem to feel isolated and alienated. And I'm just really excited for next year for them to just have these moments to have all these trusted adults just rooting for them. And that's pretty much like the intervention we're focusing on now and what I'm most excited for. It sounds like both Dave and Jessica, you're really implementing that that mentorship through that Check and Connect intervention. And Dave, as you had said, it's not just for this one building, but it will be really spread um, and have a larger impact on the entire school community. And Jessica, I'm sure you'd, you would feel the same way, that it's really going to have a much larger impact and um, ripple effect, mm -hmm. you know, not just one school, multiple schools, and then the larger community as a whole. Am I understanding correctly about that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, absolutely. I mean, we're, we're seeing you know, huge effects right now in our district. Excellent. Well, that's great and positive news to hear. So I'm so um, glad that you've been engaged with this work and have been able to make um, even just those those 
small changes but have big effects so great mm -hmm. i, I want to talk to both school districts now very specifically about the path to graduation p2g grant and in any kind of changes at any level the student level the teacher admin parent community level any changes that have occurred as a direct result of being engaged with this grant opportunity and i'm going to ask governor mifflin if you could start for me so since we're still in the beginning there isn't like um there is one direct change um, last school year when my eighth graders would go to the high school, it was kind of like I was letting my babies free into this school. But now that we have this check and connect that we're putting into place, there's going to be mentors at the high school. So the kids are able to easily transition from my emotional support program into the high school. And that's the first direct change. And I think that also really speaks to what Dave was saying, where it'll be more district wide instead of school wide. But um, that's what makes me really happy. So I can I know that the kids are taken care of at the um, high school level. Excellent, excellent. And then Butler area, if you can share um, changes that you've recognized or intend to recognize as the result of specifically of this grant. Sure, um, I think as, as Jess said, one of the things that I've noticed the most is our teams expanding beyond maybe just the IEP team for these students. Um, when we have that monthly meeting and we involve every administrator in the building and the guidance counselor, both of the guidance counselors that are working with these students and general ed teachers and all the check and connect mentors, um, the support system for that student has really, has really grown. Um, and as a ripple effect of that, the support system for all of our students who um, are served within our special education classrooms are, are growing and our special education programs is growing um, because everybody's just a little bit more aware of interventions that can be put in place. Um, it gives us a, a very focused time each month to talk about what interventions and what resources we have at our disposal to put in place for these students and other students. Um, I see that very specifically in the building where the grant students are attending. Um, I think Dave can speak a little bit more to how that ripples out to our other buildings and how we're seeing that across the district. Dave, please. Yeah, yeah we're um, we're definitely uh, we're tying the the P2G grant in with a lot of the PBIS activities that we're doing across the buildings. I mean, that while P2G is more some of our tier three students that we're very going right after those uh, specific students and trying to, to help them. Uh, we can see a lot of the other tiers, the tier one and tier two supports um, coming out across the schools and, and a lot of our other teachers and our principals and other buildings are seeing the success uh, that students are having and, and teachers and the faculty are having in our in our uh, P2G building, and they want to sort of duplicate that and, and use some of these same resources and, and same things to help their students, um, especially at some of the younger levels, you know, and we can just keep this, uh, this project going throughout our district. I hear a lot about, you know, making transitions smooth from one building to the next, which we know every time a child transitions, there is a little bit of um, anxiety, a little bit of struggles, perhaps even a little bit of backward swing with some of our students, particularly those who receive special education services. So a smooth transition is so critical. I heard a lot about expanding of teams, that it's not just this small group of individuals that are making some really strong, powerful decisions, but it's an expansion of that team and with very focused conversations and making that PBIS connection, which I think is just so critical. So, you know, I'm really excited to hear. And, and even, you know, you had said, Governor Mifflin, that um, you're kind of early on in the grant, but yet there's some really big changes happening very quickly. And for Butler, you've been in this process and have been making these and implementing these changes and they're having an impact. And as you had said multiple times, we're seeing that through more than one school and we'll continue to see that. So I think that's a very positive outlook for those other districts who are involved in the path to graduation um, grant opportunity. So I wanna thank all of you for joining Pat and Pod today. We're so excited and love to get the opportunity to showcase what other school districts across the Commonwealth are engaged in and the kind of strong, um, very guided decisions and choices that they're making to move students forward in their academics, their behavior and their social emotional learning. So thank you all so much for joining Pat and Pod. We appreciate it. I wanna thank all those teachers out there. You were an inspiration to your students, to your families, and so many more of us during this time. A special thank you to John Ragsdale for producing this podcast. We'll see you next time on Patent Pod. Stay safe, be well.